message or the whole time or the time that his message took was 23 years of his life. He was chosen by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as his messenger when he was 40. And he spent the first 13 years in Mecca with all that you all know, with the patience, with everything that he goes through him and his Sahaba. Until Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave him the permission to move to make hijrah to al Madina. There were several hijrah before he went to Medina because he sent the Sahaba to al Habasha twice and he went to Taif and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala took his closest people to him, his uncle and his wife and he made for him Al-Isra wa Al-Mi'raj. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala decided for him to move because in Mecca, the Prophet sallallahu the Prophet sallallahu message was about Tawheed. Now those who believe in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in Mecca and those who believed in Allah and those who will believe in Medina the Prophet ﷺ now, it was time for him to move to the next step, the step of the constitution of Islam, the state of Islam. But you cannot have a state without power. And wealth is part of power. And we know that all their wealth, they left it in Mecca. Because they couldn't take it with them because people of Mecca took it by force from them, because they were expelled, because they were running away to save their lives. And Quraysh took their very wealth and sent Abu Sufyan along with some people to make commerce, to make business for Quraysh. That rihla that they used to do, rihla tashita iwasayf li ilahi Quraysh, and Medina was on the road. So if one goes to Sham from Mecca, he should go by Medina. Because Medina was on the way. So the Prophet wasallam learned that these people of Mecca, they sent Abu Sufyan or they sent a group of them and he knew exactly when they were to return. And when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told him, he promised him one of two, whether the qafila, the caravan, with the wealth that they have, or the soldiers that would come with their weapons. Allah says that in Surah Al-Anfal, because Badr, is discussed in the Quran too. In Surah, mainly in Surah Al Anfal and in Surah Ali Imran. Because most of the people they didn't want to fight. Why? Because Quraysh was powerful. They have wealth, they have power. They have everything they needed to fight. While Muslims, they didn't have anything. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wanted something. And this battle of Badr took place on March 13th, 624, which corresponds to Ramadan 17th, the second year of Hijrah. It was in the month of Ramadan. This very month, this very day, the Prophet Sallallahu didn't have with him except 313 soldiers, only two horses. Some say seven, but only two horses. He didn't have anything with him. Most of the Sahaba didn't have even shoes, they didn't have, how do you call it, shoe to wear. 
Some didn't have enough clothes to go with. Weapon, zero. And they were meeting about a thousand people from Quraysh with the most sophisticated weapons of that time, the wealth and everything. And the Prophet وسلم, as we know that his entire life in Mecca, he was going under torture. And his entire life in Medina, he was going under um, uh, the pressure of the wars. Because in Medina, there were 47 battles that the Muslims had. And the Prophet, uh, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he went to most of them, but he fought with himself with his sword in nine of them. This one is one of them. And when the Muslims went from Medina, first of all, they didn't have anything. Second of it, they didn't go to fight because they went to catch the qafila, the caravan. And when they didn't find the caravan, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told him, I told you either or. So now he has to make a decision. But the Prophet وسلم, as Allah told him, wa amruhum shura baynahum. He wouldn't do anything without asking the opinion of the others. When he asked the opinion of the Sahaba, Umar ibn al-Khattab gave his word. And the Prophet وسلم, repeated because he wanted to hear from Ansar. Because Ansar, they didn't promise him that they will, meaning when we say Ansar, it is Haus uh, and Khazraj. They, they, they were the two big, uh, how do you call it? The two big uh, tribes in Medina. al aus and Khazraj. When they uh, when they took shahada and they make a covenant with the prophet, it was that they would protect him in Medina, as he would protect them in Medina. But now they are outside Medina, so who cannot he cannot tell them to fight because they are outside. He has to ask for their permission. He has to see if they agree to meet these people. Even though Allah Subhanahu wa Taala gave him a command, he can go with the muhajirin. But the answer he has to ask them. And when he asked them, they said to him, We will not tell you what bin Banu Israel said to Musa. Go and your Lord, then you fight. No, we will tell you, Inna ma'akuma qatilu. We go, we and you and your Lord, we all will fight them. So the Prophet ﷺ was asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It was a very <coughs> terrible day. And Allah promised him that he would win. Yet the Prophet Sallallahu was asking, asking, asking intensively, crying, the Prophet He was saying to Allah, Oh Allah, in tuhlaka hadihil isaba, lan tuhabada fil arti ba'da liyawm. If you let this little group, if you let the Quraysh win them, no one will worship you on earth after this day. He was praying and making, uh, how do you say, supplication until his owner, uh, Amama, dropped. And Abu Bakr took and tell him, take it easy. Allah will never deceive you. Allah will not deceive you. And the Prophet وسلم, suddenly he said to Abu Bakr, Abushir, take my glad tidings. Because I have seen Jibril alayhi salam come along with the other angels. He, he come with his horse. That means that we will win. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent Jibril with 2,000 angels. And sent Israf, uh, 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 how do you call it? Azra, uh, Israfil and Mikail along with Jibril alayhi salam. This is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the, this is what he says in the Quran. وَلَقَدْ نَصَرَكُمُ اللَّهُ بِبَدْرٍ وَأَنْتُمْ أَذِلَّ Allah help you in Badr and you are little. Very insignificant in group. If the Kuru in Muminin, Alam Yakfi Yakum and Yumid Dakum Rabukum Bithala, the Allah in Minal Malaika Munzali, Allah sent you Subhanahu wa Ta'ala 3,000 angels. Jibril was the general with Mikhail, and each of them were on the head of 1,000 angels. This Allah says that this is not for you to win. Because the angels cannot make you win. 
But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made this for you to have confidence, for you to take it easy. Is your shikumu nu'as amanatan min? You know, when your nu'as is not, uh, is, is, is not uh, uh, some kind of sleepy, it's, it's, it's like when you are sleeping deeply. They were so confident that the Prophet sallallahu and his sahaba, they become sleeping. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala showed him signs of nusr. So to make the long stories short, because we cannot go through all what happened in the in battle, it is a it is a very mashallah, it's a, it is a very important and very interesting story that every and each of us should learn. Learn from it the iman, but learn from it also the fear of Allah, and learn from it also the power of Allah, because Allah Subhanahu wa Taala promised the Prophet that He would help him. Yet the Prophet was fear was afraid of being of of of, of, of uh, not having the victory why because he knows that allah subhanahu wa ta'ala can change everything because he is fa'al yurid la yus'alu amma yafa'al he said i am not questioned no one can question why should i why did i why did i do so and so he can promise you this yet can change it at any time yamhu allahu ma yasha wa yuthabbit we learned it. We, we, we read that in Surah Turadi yesterday. Ya Allahu ma yasha'u wa yuthabbit. He erases whatever he wants. And he made whatever he wants. Anything he wants, that's what he what he's going to do. And he will fa'alu lima He does not care. The Prophet knows that. This is why all the promises that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given to him, yet if you were by the Prophet, you would hear his chest, you would hear his qalb. Uh, you, 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 you would hear the noise of, the, of, of his heart because of the fear that he has for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because he knows the knower you are to of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the more fearful you are. If you are in a, in a room sleeping and in the room there is a hungry uh, lion, your situation will be different with the one who is in the room, the same room with you, knowing that the lion is here. If you know, if you are awakened and see the lion, the way you fear the lion is different from the one who does not see the lion, the one who is sleeping in the room. Yet you are both in the same situation. We are all in the same situation. But the Prophet knows Allah more than us, that's why he fears him more than we do. The ulama say that if Allah showed you how close he is to you, you would never disobey him. And he said, But because of the wheels of ignorance that we have, we don't realize that. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala promised that, that he had confidence in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, yet he knew who Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is. He's not questioned. He's not questionable. Nobody can question him. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, with their iman they have, with the help that he gave them, with everything in, 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 in the package, he made them defeat an army of 1,000 people. They killed 17, 70 people from the Quraysh and took 70 of them as prisoners. But in the Muslims, there were only 14 people who got killed. Six from uh, Al-Ansar and eight from Muhajirin. Only 14 Verses 70 from the well armed Quraysh, powerful with the help of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And from that day, everybody started staring at Muslims. That was the first and the biggest and the real and the true beginning of Islam. It happened this very day in Ramadan. So, thinking about it, it will remind us what the Prophet went through. 13 years of torture. Now he came back here in Medina, so it is a time for them now to start coming to him because seven months after the Hijrah, he made the, the liwa to uh, uh, Hamza and Sa'd, but there was not fighting. The significant fighting was Ghazwat Batr. Then comes Ghazwat Uhud, then comes others and others, others, and we will talk inshallah about Fathul Makkah because Fathul Makkah also, which marks the opening of Islam to the world entirely happened also in this month, the month of Ramadan. 
So most of the big events of Islam happened in this month. If there was nothing but the coming of the Quran, it would be sufficient. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless all of us and accept from all of us. And let us learn from these people that were with the Prophet sallallahu And let us follow their steps in helping Islam and in believing in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the firm belief, I say. Because leaving your children and everything that you have home, meeting the enemies that are more powerful than you, there is no firm iman, you will never have it. So for us also to face the difficulties of this world, the tortures that we go through, we should and we need that very iman. May Allah grant us that iman. Mm -hmm.